Welcome to Let's Talk About It. Broadcasting live from North Nashville, Tennessee. North Nashville spans from Metro Center down to the border of Bicentennial Mall, including the neighborhoods of Bordeaux, Buena Vista, Parkwood Estates, Germantown, Haynes Manor, Jefferson Street, Fisk Park, Cumberland Gardens, Oak Valley, Enchanted Hill, and many others. It's perhaps best known for the three universities housed here including Tennessee State University, Fisk University, and Meharry Medical College. North Nashville home to the Ted Rhodes Golf Course. Ted Rhodes was a renowned, black professional golfer from Nashville, who paved the way for other black golfers like Charlie Sifford, Lee Elder, Renee Powell, and Tiger Woods. North Nashville is also home to the American Baptist College, a historically black college with a liberal arts emphasis, is to educate, graduate, and prepare diverse students for Christian leadership, service, and social justice in the world. Now live from North Nashville, Dr. William Head. Let's talk about it. Good afternoon, Northeast and South Nashville, and welcome to frigidly cold Nashville. It's 26 degrees, winds blowing about 14 miles an hour, and everybody's wrapped up like it's uh, like it's cold. Uh, to start off today. Uh, you've been hearing about the lady over in uh, Rutherford County, uh, Judge Davenport. Uh, I've talked to a couple of friends of mine who worked in uh, the school system and the uh, juvenile justice system, uh, and they are a little ambivalent about her being uh, forced to step down. They say she serves a purpose in Rutherford County. Uh, she may be well-intentioned, but the road to hell is paved with good intention. Uh, having worked with uh, juvenile uh, defend, uh, offenders, if you will, uh, I know that uh, the uh, juvenile justice system is run by the juvenile court judges. They make law as they go. Uh, and uh, sometimes the way they mete out punishment does not reflect anything that is fair. Uh, discipline in our uh, schools is suffering. The teachers are overworked, underpaid. They can't teach for filling out uh, state forms and trying to get kids to sit down and learn. Some discipline, some change in the discipline in the schools is necessary. How to go about that, I'm not sure right about now. How about them Cowboys? Uh, the Cowboys uh, rode hard and bit the dust. I am a Dak Prescott fan. I'm not a Cowboy fan. But uh, everybody wonders why uh, the Cowboys have lost 11 straight playoff uh, entry uh, games. Uh, let's look at the fact that nobody knows who the head coach is. Is Jerry Jones the head coach and owner? Or is his son his assistant head coach? And then you have the young man who calls plays, Kellen Moore. He's the offensive head coach. And that leaves the head coach in the middle. Uh, he can't make a call because the players can go from him up all the way to Jerry Jones and complain, and Jerry uh, might land on their side. The, the question is, WWJD, what would Jerry do? And if you're standing on the sidelines and you're calling plays or you're making decisions, you can't worry about what Jerry would do. And right now, that's killing the Cowboys. A Sunrise, Florida police sergeant uh, grabbed the throat of a female uh, counterpart, police officer, choked her when she tried to de-escalate uh, de a traffic stop. 
before it became deadly. Uh, I guess uh, police brutality doesn't just include the public, it includes fellow, fellow officers, especially if they're females. A week or two ago, a gentleman, a shock jock out west, a right, uh, right wing shock jock, jock, suggested that the number of uh, black people buried in uh, Arlington Cemetery indicates uh, the patriotic spirit of black folks. Well, uh, according to research I did, 180,000 freed black men, slaves, fought for the North in the Civil War with 108 officers out of all, that, all those people. The only way you're buried in Arlington is that you're an officer. So uh, let's say that the military wasn't in, integrated until 1954, 56. So it stands to reason that through the Civil War and World War I and World War II, we weren't even considered. Wow. For him, I've got the Fat Sam Award. Uh, if you don't know what Fat Sam is, Fat Sam is the last guy picked when they're picking the teams uh, to play football or baseball or basketball. For him, I have the Fat Sam Award. Uh, Miss Marjorie Taylor Green uh, equated the situation between uh, the vaccinated and the unvaccinated to uh, resemble the segregation and Jim Crow of uh, this country for years, uh, continues, by the way. And uh, she cited Martin Luther King's achievements in, in creating uh, equality. And then she turned around and said, well, the unvaccinated are treated like people of color. Uh, have they been enslaved? Do they have a choice whether or not they want to walk around and be unvaccinated? Are they... Uh, Anyway, for her, we have the K-R-Y-I-N, the Crying Karen Award. She's crying about something that makes no sense, and she uses the wrong, uh, the wrong comparison. Dave Cully, head coach of the Houston uh, uh, football team, got fired last week, as did Brian Flores. Dave Culley held together a, a raggedy ship and made it through the season with the record that was equal to the record of last year when the team had the number one quarterback in the NFL. Sounds a little shaky to me. Brian, Brian Flores had two straight winning seasons. Miami hasn't had two straight winning seasons in 20 years. So they get fired. Uh, last hide, first fired. Sound familiar? I believe you've lived it if you're watching this. They got the old razzle-dazzle. Uh, straightened the ship up and then made the walk the plank. Really good, really good reading. Just like Tony Dungy prepared the Tampa Bay to win a, a Super Bowl and uh, Brother Gruden got all the uh, accolades after he walked into a job that was wall-to-wall -wall talent. Last but not least, Major League Baseball says they want to incre in the, increase the number of African-American players in the league. Uh, they might want to make baseball uh, facilities available in the city. In Nashville, if you got enough room to pay uh, baseball, uh, the uh, developers are going to buy it up and build 20 uh, tall skinnies on it. So, uh, Major League Baseball, you got to work on the inner city facilities for youngsters to play 
or a method to get them to the to the suburban places where people play baseball and help HBCUs to reestablish baseball teams on their campuses if you really want to get it done. Well, that's my rant for the day. Other than warning, warning, warning. These people are still shooting at folks. Do you have a safe place for your child to go if they're in a mall or at school or somewhere else when something like that jumps off? Better, better find a safe place for them that you know that you can go to and find them in the case like that. You don't want to be on this side of town wondering if your child is uh, somewhere shot or dead because you can't get them on the cell phone. Find them, a, find them a safe place to go. Well, today we get to talk to two uh, old friends of mine from back in the day, the 60s and 70s, uh, former uh, city council person, district council person, Mr. Ronnie Greer and NIL and Fisk University Hall of Famer, Mr. Cecil Beard. Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon, uh -oh. Can you hear me? I we can. can't hear you. Can you hear us? <laughs> yeah, All hear right, you. talk to me. Okay, talk yeah. to me. Uh, thank you for having us all. Yeah, there you go. We got you on camera. Okay. All right, now you're coming. I heard about your program. I heard about your program. And uh, here you go blank on me. Oh, there you are. And then we get you in the Oh man, this is going to be another one of those days. We were the best. We own this state. <laughs> Cecil, I can hear you pretty good. We still getting a lot of feedback from somewhere. I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, uh, Ronnie, you and I, uh, I got a message from you from uh, uh the uh, boys president uh uh the, Ron Dowdy. huh Ron Dowdy. Ron Dowdy, uh, Lee Hume. mr dowdy yes tell us a little bit about your experiences at cameron uh uh back in the day well let me well let me oh, you want me to tell you about my experiences about yes my Let's put me aside, put me aside. Uh, I finished town in 1969. And my senior my, year class had the distinction of being uh, the high school in the city that was getting dressed on. We had no athletic competition uh, my senior year. Uh, and, um, uh, and uh, you know, uh, because of politics in this town, and then uh, the fire that is who started when we talk about the 731 team, a year of no athletics. Uh, I equate it to the same thing that happened to uh, SMU from the NCAA. <laughs> the death penalty. What we received it here, yes, the death penalty, because they couldn't play it. Oh, man. Can you hear me, Greg? I can't hear you, sir. Can you hear me? I hear you. Is it mutual? Can you hear me? Well, this is uh, embarrassing. Ah. But we'll try. Talk into the phone, yeah. We'll try. I'm talking to the phone. There now. you go. Like, Tell us, you said that. you graduated in 69 oh, when... Uh, I finished Cambridge in 1969, and uh, my, and my and senior year, that class had, we were given the death penalty by the NIL and the TSSAA. Uh, we were not allowed to play athletics for a year. And um, there's some contention about that. 
And to, but the real hill today to highlight what happened even as they tried to silence us. For one year, we had no, no interaction with any other schools around. And then come back in 1970 and 71, and that's what Cecil and Eddie did. And that's what Cecil and Eddie did. Actually, uh, it was 55 straight games. Uh, 55 straight games. But when we came back after the after, uh, suspension, um, we came back ready to roll. Coach Lawson had us in tip top shape. Uh, as you know, let me go back. Coach Lawson is a product of uh, UCLA. He played under the, under the uh, uh, coach Johnny Wood, and he brought some of those same philosophies to Cameron High School, which is condition, 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 and uh, so that that was that was how we won all those games. Uh, we were in tip-top condition, and a lot of times we, we ran those teams down until in, in the third quarter they was reaching and pulling and couldn't keep up with it. Yeah, I, re I remember seeing you guys in a uh, district tournament, I suppose it was, against Stratford, and uh, David, you, David Vaughn, uh, were, were rebounding well, and Scoring well and uh, Stratford, ooh, put. Uh, we are still. Are we still? There we go. Stratford had a young man to post himself right behind David every time he turned to go down the court, and the officials were calling an offensive foul on him, and it was uh, the place was going up like in smoke if that if that continued and the officials uh discontinued calling it the point i wanted to make with 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 greer before he finished stop well before he stopped was greer you talked about the uh the death penalty I understand that was an altercation at a game that cameron kids weren't even involved in but they got the death penalty is is that true well, is that That's low? not quite true. Okay. It's ironic you would. It's ironic it's you would mention the Cameron Stratford game where they were trying to uh, file David out of the game. The district tournament, the regional tournament, in the, at the municipal auditorium in um, the spring of '68, was between Cameron and Pearl. I mean Cameron and Stratford. Excuse me. And that particular night, they didn't post any up right up behind them. But they've made some calls that left the fans in the auditorium quite disturbed. David was in that squad. That was a squad that had Sam McDonald, Richard Burnett, uh, George House. That was, again, the March And uh, but so that game, after that game, we did march around the auditorium there was a disturbance downtown and we did our uh, best invitation of dr king's non-violent protest because for what they did that it wasn't they cheated on us i'm gonna say it that way they cheated on us and as a side to that uh just recently uh two years ago my class put together a documentary that doctor talks about that time. It's called The Past is Pulled Off, and it tells the story of how we got suspended and how we did it, overcame that state in school and continued to prosper. Um, but that happened, and that's why I said the death because and I didn't realize until later that the seniors that year didn't get to play their spring sports. So there were guys who played baseball and tennis. And uh, ran track who didn't get to show their speed because we were suspended effectively uh, immediately after that basketball game was played. Uh, and so that's why I said the death though, because we didn't get a chance to. They gave us two opportunities to speak to our role. Um, 
Uh, but it was obvious the decisions that I made. And from a historical perspective, you have to remember that this altercation in the spring of 68 happened only two years after the state and the NIL allowed the black high school teams to play in the state high school tournament. And Pearl had won it first. And Pearl had done a great job. They didn't get into the to the uh, they, they outplayed the cheating that was going on there. And they won the first tournament. And then two years later, Cameron was on the on the uh, on the doorstep of going down and doing the same thing. And it was obvious that Stratford had been our nemesis the whole year. We always always get to Cameron with Stratford. We beat them in the district tournament. Just that. And we beat them by one one point in a district tournament. We had turned around and made it to the regional tournament, and then we had to make it That night, Cameron, Gallatin, North High, and Stratford were the two schools that were participating in the regional tournament that we got to say. However, after that incident, only the Cameron Squad, or Cameron School, the only ones given that severe a punishment for that is in, in the auditorium. Well, the, 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 the point of the, my question is that a, a lot of folks do not realize that Cameron probably would have won three state championships in a row. Uh, to, the, another one to go with the two that they did win. Uh, I know that uh, Cecil, uh, during 68-69, uh, it were, was the team practicing all that time uh, before the following year, or did you guys uh, work out some other way? Yes, we, no, we, we practiced uh, every day, uh, you know, trying to sharpen our schools and get ready for the year. For the you know for the upcoming season. Okay. Uh, and yeah. I will say this: when we played Stratford, that was a memorable game because it was responsible for our suspension. And uh, when we played before we played that game, Coach lost. Coach lost the actual fly, and he wanted that game so bad. Uh, because of what happened to us in fact. So he told us to go out there and run the, run the score up. That way, because we'll be playing against seven guys on, on, on the court, meaning the officials. So that's exactly what we did. We went out and put a whipping on. Well, the... the, the uh... The first of the two championships was what year? Six months seven. We, we played uh uh our state championship game in Stokely Center, uh University of Tennessee. Against um now we played against uh Chattanooga Riverside. And uh, of course, we came out victorious. But in that game, let me tell you a little bit what happened. That game, uh, that game, I got injured. I got got my eye busted. I jumped into a airboat, and uh, I didn't know I was injured until he walked. I grabbed him, looked at me, and I, I I noticed the look on his face like. <laughs> what happened to you? I'm going, what? And I thought it was just split. But after I put my hand up there, I saw blood. Uh, they called time out. They took me back to the back and put a, one stitch in my eye. And I came back out. And uh, I did more. I did better with that playing with one eye than I did with two. <laughs> uh, Cecil, so you were. Yeah, that was uh, the girl. You were you were always known uh, 
well, I won't say always known, but you were known in coaching circles and, and in the newspaper circles as the silent assassin. Uh, everybody would watch you play and it didn't look like you were making a whole lot of contribution until you got the uh, box score and you had uh, 10 or 12 rebounds, 12, 14 points. So when did he do all this? Uh, how did how did you fit into that role so easily, uh, knowing that everybody was was trying to take David on and forgot Goliath over on the other side? Well, I just feel like that's where I've been with and uh, you know, I wasn't a flashy player. Uh, I just went out and played and uh, just uh, practiced, played the way we practiced. Uh, now, a lot of times we play against guys who were calling and, and uh, the reason why I got a lot of rebounds is because I was a quick jump. Yeah, and... Uh, by the time these tall guys get up there to get a rebound, I was already there. <laughs> the, the, the idea. So, yeah, I was quick to over. And, yeah, and uh, I just did my job. And, uh, like I said, I didn't, I didn't make a lot of notes like some of the other players did. Uh, like I said, I was a silent killer. Like I said, I was a silent Well, the, 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 the trick was that you got it done. Uh, and and nobody really noticed that you did, so you kept getting it done. Uh, I uh, I remember seeing you play in the state tournament. I don't want to don't want to say that I remember who you were playing, but you and I talked the other day about uh, Chattanooga Howard and 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 Riverside. Uh, do you? Uh, well, no, I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to say this. It is my opinion that any time a, uh, a predominantly black high school won a state championship uh, or won back-to-back -back state championships, the next two years the school was closed. Had you noticed that tendency with the... With exactly. the say again? Yes. And you mentioned that if they had not suspended us, we might have talked about it. We might have talked about it. I can tell to you that if they had not suspended us, that would have been maybe the first one. Well, if they had not killed us, we would have been the second championship. That was probably another three behind that. The South Nashville community is the getting you because Cecil has the phone over there where he is and you too far away from for me to hear. I was saying that. 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 I was saying that.
Davis and called his name. Uh, Otto and Otto, Otto, and 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 Otto, that, that two years following the integration of the high school basketball in the state of Tennessee, Cameron High School was still up. Cameron High School was still up. They 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 still up. And for that challenge, they did. Ronnie? Ronnie, we're going to take a minute for a commercial, and we'll be right back with Let's Talk About It. Ed's Fish and Pizza House, 1801 Drive, D.B. Todd Jr. Boulevard is a soul food restaurant for as long as there have been soul food restaurants. We have been serving the North Nashville area since 1972. At Ed's Fish, we have a very specific way of serving it, the hot fish sandwich. A couple of crit fried fillets often totaling a pound. Spritzed with hot sauce are arranged between two to four slices of white bread with raw onions, pickle chips, and mustard. Various accompaniments are available, including coleslaw and fried potatoes, but the classic companion is a serving of sweet sauce spaghetti noodles. Ed's Fish serving the North Nashville area. Give us a call 615-255-4362 or drop by today. In 1973, the Fisk University radio station, WFSK, formerly WFEN, became the first African America FM radio station in Nashville. At that time, all the DJs and hosts were Fisk men until 2005, when then-President Hazel O'Leary felt that there needed to be female representation at the radio station instead of an all-male cast of characters. That female representative was Sharon Kay, who was hired as general manager of Jazzy 88 WFSK that year. The 411 with Sharon K is an award-winning syndicated empowerment and encouragement program. The popular talk show airs live twice a week from the studios of Jazzy 88 WFSK at Historic Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee on Wednesday afternoons from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday mornings from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Over the years the informative talk program has hosted fundraisers for various causes in the community, lead community-based initiatives, connected mentors to ments, family members, hosted political forums, and has been a ratings leader. So in 2023, WFSK will be celebrating 50 years of service to Nashville. And I say on behalf of Black Radio, that is an extraordinary thing. So I want to thank all of you over the years that have supported the station, the businesses that have supported and sponsored and underwritten here, the donors who still continue to give. We thank you because without you, WFSK would not be here today. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, and seems like the bandwidth is killing us today. Uh, the uh, Cecil and, and Ronnie are across town, and we've been talking to people in Houston and other places and not had as much trouble with the sound as we're having today, so forgive us if you will. Uh, Greer, you, you, you got me? You can hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, yeah, the uh, the. I can see you. Yeah, I can see you, but I think I might have disappeared. <laughs> the boss man has has uh, lost connection. Now we got a real mess. <laughs> I'll ask you the question while he's trying to get me back on screen. 
Uh, Cecil, when uh, when uh, you guys uh, resume play in the NIL and the uh, TSSAA, when you guys renewed play in the TSSAA, uh, did you find anything uh, that that you remember being uh, not? to the team's liking other than the fact that uh, it was hard to get a game where you you weren't six points behind before the game started. How were you treated on the road? Yeah. I, can, uh, I can tell you uh, one experience that we had in Knoxville where uh, we were playing Knoxville Austin East and uh, we had a Pretty nice lead on him, but this one instance, I was at the uh, free throw line. We had a chief, uh, two free throws, and I looked up, and there was a guy standing right up on the goal with a gun pointed at me. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I called time out and went over and told Coach, Coach Lassie that I'd seen him. And uh, Coach Lawson went over and got security guards and they escorted that guy out of the, out of the gym. Well, so that was a school. The, the, road, yes. the road through the uh, through the tournament, I'm sure, was, was rocky. Did you guys have anybody that actually challenged you during the course of the state tournament? Games I no. saw. No. Go ahead. The closest game, game that we had uh, score-wise was uh, Memphis Mellow. Uh, we, uh, I think we beat them uh, three or four points in that last state uh, championship. But they had us down by, I think, 10 at the half, and we came back, and of course, we... Had you down yes, by how many? Ten. Ten? Okay. That had us down by two and we couldn't go. And then uh, after uh, Coach Lawson called us to the side and threatened us, <laughs> threatened our lives if we didn't start playing ball. So we went back out there and we took care of those guys. Took care of business. Yes, sir. I, uh, uh, the, the, point I was making to Greer earlier, but I want to ask you, do you feel that that uh, Riverside and Cameron and Pearl's complete change or closing was was due to uh, their uh, athletic uh, prowess? Uh, do, do you think they were closed because they were uh, playing too well in the TSSAA tournament? Yes, I, I think so. I think there was some serious to uh, shut down uh, schools that uh, had power, had uh, you know, great athletes, uh, such as Cameron and Pearl. Yes, I, I do believe that. And how I add to that is the, uh, that uh, is that look as if Greer, uh, give the give the phone back to Cecil. For some reason, you, every time he hands you the phone, now you let him hold it and you talk. <laughs> Tell Greer to talk while you hold it, because it seems like every time 
every time you hold it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think I need to come to Michael. What I was saying is that um, there we go, the, man. The beginning in 1966, after Earl won the first state championship, the black high school in Black high school. Yeah, I think they just as good. They were all good. They were all good. So, but it's just that me. So, that's what it's me. of you we're going to take another break and we'll be right back after these words from our sponsors Crossroads Campus. So happy to have you guys here. I'll take you and show you through. I'm the program director. My name is Eric Davis and I've been here for about seven months now. Um, so who we are, we help young adults in the community uh, ages 18 to 24 facing severe poverty and homelessness. And what we do is provide them opportunities to kind of get back on their feet and uh, work back in the community. Um, coming down to our Crossroads campus through our job training program as well as our affordable housing program. So right here is our pet retail store, it's a social enterprise. Our young adults here pretty much help us, they assist us with running the store. So they're learning different universal skills, whether it's working the register, whether it's customer service, whether it's marketing, things like right. that. So as part of our job training program, we have four areas that we have our interns focus. Um, we have the animal care, um, so they go through animal skills or animal care. We have a retail skills chart of all the things that they learn while they're in retail. Uh, we also have a bakery operation where we go off into an industrial kitchen. They learn food certification services and um, they learn how to use the industrial cooking areas. Um, and they make dog treats that are for sale in the store and through other stores in the Nashville area. And we also have our grooming skills chart. So in each of these, we have different skills starting from very beginning in both animal care and grooming. It's learning about animal body language, what to expect, how to work with those animals, how to communicate with those animals. In the retail, it's basic customer service, how to answer the phones, product information, how to use a computer system. Um, so they learn different things that we, uh, are hoping that they will be able to use in the rest of their life to create a sustainable living situation for each of the interns that goes through our program. Right. Here at Crossroads Campus, we are a job training program, an animal care program, an animal adoption program, and an affordable housing unit. Um, Crossroads Pets is the place where we believe that people and animals connect.
with my uh, two-headed friends in there. Cecil, uh, give me some last comments on uh, the back-to-back championship seasons because we're going to close and yep. let Ronnie have the last word. Okay, well, folks, first of all, I just want to thank you for having me. Uh, and those back-to-back championships uh, was, was really – uh, it was great, uh, and I, I really enjoyed being a part of those teams. Um, of course, uh, some of the guys that, that was a part of those teams are no longer with us. The guys that I played was with was exceptional, uh, and uh, we uh, we were just voted. Uh, by this uh, church, the Wesley Center Church, as living legends. So uh, that was something that I'll always cheer. But uh, just thank you for having me. Uh, my pleasure. You know that uh, that 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 you're one of the finest men I know. So it's always good to to have you part of of what we do. Greer, we'll let you have the last word. Tell us what you, what's on your mind about Cameron. Well, I, I would like to say, as she, as she said, thank you for uh, uh, bringing light to the story of Cameron High Panthers. Maybe this will start us on honoring the school of legends as they should be uh, in order to write, in order to like to get um, some information about the and it tells the story of that space and time that you as a to camera city match you know, about that. Well we we certainly enjoyed having you and uh we wanted to make now I've gotta find somebody from Haynes which will which will take us uh, around the horn, and then finally get somebody from from Megs and 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 talk about the the city as a whole uh, athletically. It has been my pleasure this evening, ladies and gentlemen, to talk to two gentlemen that I know well uh, and uh, have great affinity for. Uh, the struggle continues. The uh, the Congress, the Senate, will uh, is fighting to uh, kill the uh, voting rights legislation. If you know your senator's telephone number, you need to call them and tell them. In the state of Tennessee, they're trying to uh, remap the district that Nashville falls into. You need to call your state legislator and your and your. Uh, congressman and representative in Washington uh, to uh, speak out about that situation. And uh, we're going to seek an audience with uh, uh, one of the uh, council persons who is pushing that. If we can uh, get that done, we will do a special show uh, simply to have uh, them to explain to us what we need to do as citizens to make these things happen. If you don't uh, participate, you can't complain. So participation at this point is the thing. We need numbers. We need to get up just like we did in the last presidential election. You need to find a way to get people to the poll to vote. You need to help people who have difficulty reading to vote. Uh, so that this thing that we see as an affront to democracy has got to end. Otherwise, everybody will be like folks in Russia, uh, abiding by what the premier says. We don't need that. Democracy is, the, is, the, is a poor excuse, but it's better than any other excuse for governing. So it is imperative 
that you become active in your community, active any way you can to fight this thing that is trying to take us back to 1863. The president uh, hearkened uh, Bull Connors the other day. <laughs> that really went back a ways, back into the 60s. Some people didn't know what he was talking about. Talked about George Corley Wallace. Uh, th that was a one-time presidential uh, nominee, not a nominee, but he was running for in primaries to gain the nomination. Uh, if you don't know, ask somebody. Pick up a book. Look on the inter internet and find out about the fight for uh, equality in public housing and all the other areas that have changed in the last 50 years. Please, it is imperative that you become part of the answer. If you're sitting on your hands, you're part of the problem. And with that, I have my quote from the Reverend Dr. Dale P. Andrews, the late Reverend Dr. Dale P. Andrews, who was the chairman of homiletics in the uh, office, I mean, in the Department of uh, Divinity at Vanderbilt University. He said, I have more questions than answers, more problems than solutions. From these gifts, I freely share. God bless and keep. Get your mask, put it on, keep it on. Get vaccinated if you haven't. Get all the vaccination. And if you want to be tested, 28th and Charlotte is the place to go. Meharry is doing one hellacious job. If you go, take a cup of coffee with you because it's cold out there and they appreciate the coffee. Take them something warm. You got some uh, homemade uh, chicken noodle soup. I'm sure they would appreciate it on a cold morning. God bless and keep. This has been.